All right, we're going to work on section 3.6 in the Intermediate Algebra book, which is factoring sums and differences of cubes. Okay, if you have the Intermediate Algebra book, on page uh, 133, right at the top of the page, there's a couple of formulas for factoring the sums and differences of cubes. Yes, you need to memorize these formulas. I'm just going to write them here so that we can talk about them for a minute. When you're factoring the difference of cubes, the formula is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. If you're factoring the sum of cubes, the factors are a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And what I want you guys to notice about these two formulas is that the terms in these two formulas are identical. The only thing different is the signs. So instead of trying to memorize it as two different formulas, just memorize the terms and you can use an acronym of SOAP to help you remember what the signs are. SOAP stands for the first sign should be the same. That means the first sign is the same as what you're factoring. So if you're factoring a difference, the first sign is a minus. If you're factoring a sum, the first sign is a plus. So same for the first sign. Opposite for the second sign. So if you started with a minus, the next sign is the opposite. If you start with a plus, again opposite. The third sign in both formulas is always positive. So same, opposite, always positive. The terms are a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared. Memorize the terms, use SOAP to help you with the formulas. So we're going to go to example one, which says factor x cubed minus 64. And this is the difference of cubes. We know that because we know 64 is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 cubed. So when you're factoring the cubes, your first job is to assign a and b because the formulas are written in the terms of a and b. So this is how you do that. You first assign a as the cubed root of the first term, or what number cubed gives you x cubed, and of course that would be x. b is the cubed root of the, the second term. What number cubed gives you 64, and that would be 4. Now one thing I do want to point out, that these are never negative, never negative. You, it doesn't even matter if there's a negative sign here. I know negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 will give me negative 64, but this negative sign is going to be taken care of when we do the signs for the formula. So A and B are always positive. You never put negative signs on them. Then you write your formula, the, f the, the uh, terms first, A b, a squared, a b, b squared. And then you use the acronym SOAP to help you with the signs. So I'm just going to write SOAP right here. The first sign is the same as what you're factoring. So the first sign here will be negative. The second sign is opposite. So if we started with negative, we'll go to a positive. The third sign is always positive. So same opposite, always positive. So the third sign is going to be another plus. Then you take a and b and you fit it into this formula. So a minus b is going to be x minus 4. a squared will be x squared. a b is a times b, so 4 times x. b squared will be 4 squared, which is 16. And these are your factors. If you took the time to multiply it out, it would be double distribute. You would find that it simplifies to make x cubed minus 64. All right, let's do example two, which says 8x cubed minus 27. And of course, our first job is to assign a and b. I hope you recognize that these are cubes. 
8 is q 2 times 2 times 2, and 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So when I assign a, it's going to be the cubed root of 8, which is 2, and the cubed root of x cubed, so 2x. And you can always check that by saying, okay, if I took three of these and multiply them together, does it really make this? 2x times 2x times 2x does make 8x cubed. And what number cubed makes 27 would be 3. Then I write my formula, a, b. You need to memorize these terms. a squared, a, b, b squared. And then I use soap for my signs. So I'm going to write soap right here. Same, opposite, always positive. And then I'm going to fit a and b in. So a minus b will be 2x minus 3, a squared. And this is a tricky one. Most students will write 2x squared here. But when you square a, you have to square the coefficient and the variable, the entire term. So it'd be 2x times 2x. That's what a squared would be. And of course, that makes 4x squared. And then a times b, 2x times 3 is 6x. And then b squared, 3 times 3 is 9. And those would be your factors. Alright, we're going to do number 3, which says 4x cubed minus 32. Um, and I hope that you're recognizing right off the bat that these are not cubes. There is no number that when I cube it that gives me 4, or a number that I cube will give me 32. But if you uh, did the factoring review in the last video, you'll remember that the first thing we should look for is a GCF. So is there a common factor for these two terms? Yes, there is, and it happens to be 4. So we're going to factor out the GCF, and that leaves us with x cubed minus 8, which is the difference of cubes. So nothing's going to happen with this GCF here. We'll just see it in our final answer. This is our cubes, and so we're going to assign a and b for those cubes. The cubed root of the first term will be x. The cubed root of the second term is 2. And then we're going to write our, our formula, a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared. And we're going to use soap to put in our signs. The first sign is the same, opposite, always positive. Then we'll fit a and b in here. Do not forget this GCF that you started with has to always be in the front here, so we want to go ahead and write that in right there. Okay a minus b is going to be x minus 2. a squared will be x squared. a times b, 2x. b squared is 4. And those are going to be your factors. Alright, let's do number 4. Whoops. Maybe. All right, number four says x cubed plus one. So this is the sum of cubes now, which basically factors the same as the difference of cubes that we worked on the last three examples. The only thing different with this sum instead of a difference is when you line up the signs in your formula, and that's why we use SOAP. So we're going to assign a and b. a will be x x times x times x, b will be 1, 1 times 1 times 1, and then we're going to write our terms, a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared, and we're going to use soap to put in the signs. The first sign is the same, so now we're going to start with a plus this time, then opposite, then always positive, and then we will fit in a and b, a plus b, will be x plus 1. a squared will be x squared. a times b will be 1 times x. You can write the 1 if you like. We don't usually write a coefficient of 1, but you can. Plus b squared. 1 squared is 1. And those are going to be your factors. And 
it looks like we're up to example five. Can I scroll? Yes. Example five says y cubed plus 125. So we're going to assign a and b. a will be y, b will be 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Our terms, a, b. a squared, a, b, b squared. And we will use soap to give us our signs. Same, s the same as what you're factoring. Opposite, always positive. Then we will fit a and b in. So this would be y plus 5. a squared is y squared. a times b will be 5y. b squared will be 25. And those are your factors.